Hey everybody, it's Keith with Bob CNC. Welcome to Shop Talk. And as always, I am here with my best friend Robert. And I'm here with my best friend Keith. And we're going to talk about bits today. Bits. Bits, lots of them. A lot of people, like, when you throw. Right, router bits, right? Router bits. Okay. For, you, for the Evolution. Okay. And the uh, KL series. And the Revolution. Well, the, and the Revolution. Yeah. There are all kinds of different bits used in machining that you're never going to use here. Right. There are certain types of bits that you're going to use in a standalone router, mm -hmm. a hand router for yeah. doing molding and edging that you're probably never going to use in your CNC. So we're just talking about really a basic, what, maybe three or four bits? Yeah, so uh, I mean categorized loosely, you would have V-bits, right? Different yep. angles, but V-bits. And then you have really your set of uh, uh, bits for cutting, which would be, you know, your straight cut, your up cut, your down cut. And those right. would be end mills? Yeah, end mills. And then, and then they would have different shapes like, a, you know, flat bottom or a ball nose or a complete round. Okay. And then the other one that you would use uh, really for 3D relief carving uh, on that final pass would be a tapered ball end, right? So uh, it's really got just a little round over edge, but it comes down as a taper. And the idea of that... Kind of looks like a V-bit with flutes. Yeah, but it's it's a really uh, it it really is a tall uh, taper. So they're like ten or fifteen or twenty degrees. But really, what they're trying to do, you, you'll see that most of these are like a quarter inch, right? For our CNCs, you can get them in half inch too for for that's, longer ones. That's for your for, for your shaft size, yeah. But the reason why you have a taper ball in really is for strength, right? So you're you're really trying to have as much material as you can until you get down to the bottom where it's really small. So it, a, a tapered ball in is great for doing really detailed work rapidly because it can still move fast because the small part is just small at the bottom. It's, it gets larger at the top, right? right? Think about that one for a minute. So, uh, so that was good for the 3D relief carving. Um, the V carving um, is where the best way to explain this, I think, for me, is when you create a star, you want really sharp points, right? Well, if you have a round bit, that's, let's just say a quarter inch round, when you make a star, it's gonna have a rounded corner on that star, but that's no good. So if you have a V bit and you use V carving, which is a process where you calculate the Z so that as the line gets wider in that star, the bit goes deeper. Right. I think you explained that with like railroad well, there, tracks, no, there, right? I, well, well it, it didn't come from me. I just okay. read a really good description of it. The guy said, think of railroad tracks disappearing into the horizon. Right. And then you have you have a V bit with a certain angle and put the point down. Yep. And it is going to go all the way down till the edge of the bit rides on the rail. Yep. And as it disappears into the into horizon, your perspective yep. or yep. into the horizon, the bit is actually rising up as the rails come closer yep. together. So you can do a lot of really fancy like the Fancy writing fonts like the calligraphy, yes. where you really need sharp points and it gets wider. So if you're doing that kind of work, a V-bit is awesome because it can make the really fine points, or you can just do a square and it will have really sharp corners, right? Which right. you couldn't get away with, or you would never be able to do with a, a regular bit. The other thing that V-carve is, or a V-bit is really good for is inlay work. So imagine, if you will, on one piece of wood, you cut out all the valleys. On the other piece of wood, you would cut out all the mountain ranges. Now you would just put some glue and just sandwich those together. Once it's dry, you could cut it in half, and now you would have a perfect inlay. So a V-bit is really good for doing uh, or inlay work. Yes. So, the v so if you're use doing small inlay, really fine lines, you want to use a really sharp bit so that you can go deeper and a fatter bit if you don't want to go deep. So by a sharp bit, you're talking about the angle. Okay, like yes. 30 degrees too yeah. much or even down lower? Well, even down degrees. lower, yeah. You can get them to 10 and 12 degrees. So, so I mean, wh when you're doing this, guys, understand you are going to develop a collection of bits. Yeah, and we haven't even talked about the most common. Now, the other ones, you know, uh, the regular end mill bits, whether it's an up cut, down cut, or a straight cut, they're typically uh, the same diameter all the way down. And they're normally used for cutting out shapes, or if you have a bull nose, maybe some roughing. So when you're doing your 3D relief carving, just to get rid of most of the material, you're going to use one of these bits, like a, a bull nose. 
Uh, if you're cutting out shapes, then you are going to use a regular end mill. Um, straight cuts kind of give you the best of both worlds. A down cut will absolutely... Now by straight cut, what do you mean? I the mean flute the, the, is straight. the flute is straight. It doesn't helix up or it doesn't helix down. Right. So it, it gives you kind of the best of both worlds. It doesn't give you a really nice clean edge, but it doesn't give you an awful edge. So you can cut all the way through the board with multiple and passes. The, the, the thing about the awful edge is yeah. because the way that helix, whether it's twisting up or twisting down, right. you're either cutting and forcing material down into the bottom of your cut. Yeah. And that gives you a really tight or a clean edge on the top. Right. Or you're pulling material up. Yeah. And then you talked about the compression where it's actually doing both. Yeah, so if you take like a, a down cut, it's actually cutting down. So if I have something solid to cut, I can cut. But if I do an up cut, the wood moves out of the way. So you get the little fuzzies, right? right. So the up cut, even though you get the fuzzies, it pulls the chip right out of the groove. So that's really nice, right? Because you, your, your chips aren't compressed in the groove. A down cut has a tendency to you know, push all those chips down, which if you don't manage that can cause some issues too. And then you talked about a compression bit, yeah. which actually has both. So it has an up cut on the bottom, a down cut on the top, and it's great for cutting plywood. The uh, difficulty that you'll have with those is is you if you're going to take advantage of the down cut it has to your first pass has to be deep enough so that the up cut is buried and the down cut is doing the cutting across the top of the wood or you'll still get the fuzzies and then after that you can uh, put the bottom up cut at the bottom of your plywood yeah it's complicated it's, it, yeah. yeah right so that you get a clean cut on both sides so a compression bit is really used for uh, cutting all the way through and getting a clean side or clean cut on both sides. There's no way we can handle all this in just a, a little bit of time. But if you have any questions about the bits you're using, what you should buy, you can get all of us at the help desk at Bob C and C. Yeah. And also be sure to check our link for bits and bits. Right, and we also have a customer, Greg, who wrote just kind of a, a, oh, a yeah. summary on that. You know, so we, on our website, we have uh, project customer contributions where uh, all of you guys have written us articles that we posted there to, to help out the, uh, the, the guy getting started. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, thank you for that. So guys, till next time, we'll see ya.